Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. Uh, we're going to begin tonight in Hebrews, the fourth chapter. We're talking about what is the content of your heart. Now, we did this series. I was going through my archives on my uh, computer. And the last time that I taught on this was back in 2005. I thought, wow, has it been that long? And that's what my computer told me. So, you know, everybody believes in their computer. We're trying to get everybody to believe in the Lord that much. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. For the word of God is quick or alive, and it's powerful or full of power, and it's sharper, more clearly defined than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit in the joints and the marrow. That's spirit, soul, and body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. That's a key statement in there. There's a lot of key statements in the verse, but that's a key statement that we'll talk a little bit about tonight. And he is a discerner. In other words, he knows, he sees into the thoughts and the intent of our heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. He knows everything about anybody or about everybody. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things in every creature and every person, but all things are open, are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So that's just simply telling us that nothing, we can hide nothing from God he sees in the innermost part of our being, spirit, soul, body. Knows all about us. Amen. And so, uh, you know, that's a, that's a good thing to know. Maybe sometimes it's not such a good thing to know, depending on what he finds in there. Amen. No, but that's a good thing. So we know this, that the, that the word of God is not a religious book. Of course, most people, if you, they see you carrying the Bible, you know, they'll label you as your religious person. But the book is not, as we know, is not a book of religion. It's a book of relationship. And so the Word of God is not simply a collection of words from God or a vehicle for communicating ideas. It is living, life-changing, and dynamic as it works in the believer with the uh, incisiveness of a surgeon's knife. Talked about sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word reveals who we are and what we are as well as what we're not. He sees, knows, he sees and knows all things about us. Neither, verse 13, Neither is there any creature or any person or anything, neither is there any creature that is not manifest, not open, not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him that we have to do. Now, we read that just a moment ago. So the word of God is not simply a collection of words from God, it's not a vehicle for communicating ideas, our own thoughts, opinions, and ideas about it. It is uh, living, it's life-changing, and it is dynamic as it works in the believer uh, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the skill of a surgeon's knife. God's word reveals who we are and what we are and what we are not. The word of God penetrates uh, to the core of our moral and spiritual life. It discerns what is within us, both good and evil. When we use the word evil, a lot of translations will use the word unbelief there. You know, we think 
Evil is not a good word in our society today. But there he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, in, in, inwardly. And so uh, uh, the word will penetrate, does penetrate the core of our moral and spiritual life. It discerns what is within us, both good and evil. The demands of God's word require decisions. We must not only listen to the word, we must also let it shape our lives. So it's one thing to say, I believe the Bible, but it's another thing to allow it to shape my life, shape how I live, how I respond, how I act, all of the things that we could talk about there. So it's one thing to learn about the word, yet it's another thing for the word to be alive and working in its power in my life. See, it's just uh, surface religion, if you want to call it. You know, we could look at it from that standpoint. But listen, listen to what, a, what, uh, what the word does. It's one thing to learn about the word, and we should. Yet it's another thing also for the word to be alive and working in its power in our life. So the Bible tells us that the word is powerful or that the word is full of power and that the word, God stamped his anointing on his word. So his anointing brought the power of, the, of his spirit to the word. And so when we lift, when we lift the, the writings of the Bible off of the pages of the Bible and, and, and download it as it were into our spirit, our heart, then the word can begin to do what it is qualified or what God made it to do where our lives are concerned. So you can know about it. You know, people can say, I believe there is a God, but yet not know God. Or they could say, I believe there is a God, but yet not shape or form their life after the principles of God, we know that we know that that's possible to do that. Now I'm going to do a little football with you here. I don't know if you're a football fan or not, but years ago I remember, and some of you, some of you's back in my day, last century, Vince Lombardi, who was the coach of the Green Bay Packers during their championship years of the '50s and perhaps into the early '60s, every year at the beginning of the year when they came to camp to get ready for the season. Vince Lombardi would hold up a football and he'd look at those guys and he'd say, this is a football. As if, you know, uh, they may have thought, well, hey, we know that we, we play the game. But he was drawing their attention to their purpose. God's word is our football and it draws our attention to its purpose. So Vince Lombardi, uh, during the championship years, they won several Super, uh, Super Bowls. In fact, they won the very first Super Bowl way back yonder. All of you remember that. And so, uh, but he, what he would do, he would hold up a football and tell his players, this is a football. Now notice this. In the group that he was talking to, the team uh, that he was talking to, there, there were all pro players. People who made, you know, they were, they were named all pro, meaning they made a, a, some type of, of, uh, of a valuable position or player. And, uh, uh, and sometimes in that group would be a most valuable player in the NFL the previous season. So he's talking to people who know the game. He's talking to people who play the game. And so what is purpose? Because I'm relating this to, well, I go to church and I hear the same thing over and over again. And some people, you know, kind of throw up their hands and say, I just want to go somewhere where I hear, hear something different, something new. That, that, this is the very thing that Lombardi is trying to get his players away from feeling, well, I've, I've heard that before. We've done that before. Well, I know that, you know. He knew he had to take them all the way back to the basics and start from there for what lie, 
for what, for what was in the future for, for them. And so in the group, there would be all pro players. Sometimes there would be perhaps a most valuable player uh, in that season. And uh, then there'd be people then that, that made the, as I said, the all pro team. So you would think that all of them knew what a football was. After all, this was their profession. What is our profession? After all, we're a Christian. So there's things that we may know, but we don't necessarily, I say we people, uh, don't necessarily want to hear about the basics of the thing that we make our profession to, or uh, I'm a Christian. So uh, yes, yet it, it was a simple lesson that, that Lombardi gave his team. It was a simple lesson to illustrate that no matter how long they had played the game, or how proficient they were in the past, it is the attention to the now that made the difference for the future. And that, that certainly is, uh, it's very, very necessary that we who are God's people can tune in to that. So let me say it again. It was, it was a simple lesson. Lombardi was given a simple lesson to his players to illustrate that no matter how long they had played the game, no matter how proficient or excellent that they were in playing the game in the past, it, it, he was bringing their attention to the now that made the difference for the upcoming season or for the future. So we don't ever want to get away from the basics. We don't want to ever come to the place that, well, I've heard that before. I heard that before. I heard that before. But just take it like this. There is a reason that we need to hear it because we are living in the now and looking toward the future. We know what's behind us as we've come along uh, in our walk with God. So if any of the players, if any of Lombardi's players, Green Bay Packer fl uh, players, if any of the players had lost their motivation, if any of the players had lost their desire, if any of the players had lost their motivation, their, their desire, they, let me get my page here. They, my goodness. They, uh, and, and their desire, let me, let, me, let me say that again. If any of the players had lost their motivation, their desire, if any of the players had lost their motivation, lost their desire to excel, and lost their desire most of all to win, Lombardi knew it would have an effect on the team. How many of you know that we're co-laborers together with God? That we're not independent, uh, doing things independently. We're all uh, laborers together with God. He's the coach. Jesus is the coach. And so Lombardi knew all of that about his players, so he was bringing his players to what is necessary now. Not what you did yesterday, but what is, what is necessary for today because your future lies in front of you. And so no player there uh, was only, was not to be there only for a payday. Uh, no player who was there only, let me say it that way, for a payday would have uh, internally, would not have internally what it took to be a champion. If all they showed up for was the payday, then they, they didn't have what was in them, what they needed within them as a football player to play championship football. So they had to know what's in them. We have to know as Christians what's in us. What is our motivation? What is our desire? What are we looking to? What are we here for? How does God want to use me here? All of these things to, do, to excel and to uh, be excellent and to walk hand in hand with God. All of that has to uh, come to rest within us, the desire within us to do and to please. And so the football players who only played to get a paycheck, all they could say was I'm on the roster or they could say I'm one of the 53. It's like saying, for us, it's like saying, well, I'm saved, and that's good enough. Well, I'm saved, and I'm going to heaven. 
from here to here, there's a, there's a space somewhere in between there where we are not just hanging out, as it were. There's a purpose for us in that. So unless, well, let me back up again. Grueling practices, injury, pain, aches, heat, cold, coaches yelling at them, having to listen to the same instructions and corrections day after day. If they didn't have the necessary, uh, what was necessary inside, many of them would grow tired of hearing and would not give the attention to preparing themselves for what, for what was out in the future. So we don't want to do that. Uh, we believe that Jesus is coming soon. All signs are, more than ever are pointing to that, that the rapture is, is close. I don't know, but we use the word close, close. We have to be careful that we don't uh, put time frames and whatever on it because we don't know. But uh, these practices, uh, some of the players were injured, they suffered pain, they had aches, they had, uh, had to practice in the heat, in the play, in the cold. Coaches would yell at them and they would have to listen to the same instructions and corrections day after day. And if they didn't want to improve and if they didn't want to, uh, uh, you know, better, do better what they were doing, they'd grow tired of that routine. And so sometimes we as Christians or people who are Christians, sometimes they can get tired of hearing the same things over and over, over a period of time. They, they can get tired of that, not realizing it's what you learned in the past, what brought you victory in the past and how it's going to help you in the now and especially help you as you go into your future. It's very, 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 very important, I would, I would think. And so, and so unless that football player had an internal picture of what this preparedness was about, they would not have internally what it took to be a winner. And so they may have come to camp with good intentions, but they, their content did, ma did not match their intent. Now that's the key. That's what we'll work off of just a little bit. Their, their, uh, their content did not match it their intent. Or so you could bring it down to our life. Well, I intended to do that, but I didn't. Well, I had every intention of doing that, but I didn't. So why did we not do it? Because the content, our internal thoughts, our internal motivation, our inter internally, we intended to do it, but we didn't have in us what it took to do it. And so that is in our walk with God. We, we have intent to be the best. We have an intent to walk close to God. We have the intention of, uh, of many things that we could uh, speak about in our relationship with God. But somehow we might say, well, I just never did get around to it. So what do we say? We just simply say that the, the, uh, the, the intent did not have the content, they did not have within them the power or, or the strength of the spirit. They did not have within them faith. They didn't have within them what it took to cause their intentions to come to pass or to do what they intended to do. They didn't have the wherewithal to do that. And so we see then that uh, all of the grueling practices, the pain, the aches, the heat, the cold, Cold, the coach is yelling, some in, same instruction, same correction. And learning, learning the playbook gave the coach to, uh, gave uh, the coach insight to each player. And so the coach had to see that in them for them to be a member of the team. Well, we're on a team. Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And we're on his team. Amen. And Jesus is looking not only for your intent, he's looking for your content. He's looking, is there something in you that will cause you to pursue, you know, the, uh, 
the, the, the thing that you desire, the, the thing you want from God or desire from God. He's looking. He is a discerner of the thoughts and, and the intent of the heart. All things are naked and open unto him with whom we have to do. So God sees, God knows, and he's the coach. So we can say, well, I've heard that before, and you can hear the coach yell, and you need to hear it again. You know, a coach co uh, coaching from the sidelines. And you can hear the voice of his instructions. Uh, uh, take the slack out. You know, I've had the coach yell that to me a lot of time. Uh, take the slack out, get with it, whatever the instruction was. Then God sees that. God knows what's needed. God understands where we're at. He, we're, 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 all things are naked and open unto him with whom we have to do. So I'm not hiding anything from God. I, I, I'm not pulling the wool over God's eyes. Now, I don't know that you ever thought that is not what I'm saying, but I think sometimes that's, that mentality sometimes could be present in a person. But God sees it. God knows it. And then we hear people say sometimes, does God not know what I'm going through? Does he not know how hard it is? He knows all about it. He knows what caused it. He knows what's keeping it there. He knows all about it. So everything's naked and open. He knows you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knows us. He knows everything that life that he has prepared for our life, he knows all of those things, but he also knows what path we're traveling, if we're going to reach it or if we're not going to reach those things that he has for our life. He knows everything. So it's not, not and they don't need to tell him how bad you was tempted. How come, on? you know, Jesus didn't do that. You know, he was tempted to run. He was tempted, you know the story. He was tempted in the garden there. Uh, not, not, not to go the way of the cross. He was tempted to do that, but he, his intent was to bring and to, uh, to, to bring redemption to mankind, and he had the content in him to go through with it. We got to have the content, people. We got to have the desire. We ha we got to have the want to. If you don't have it, all you can you'll wind up being just knowing something about God, but not really knowing the God of uh, who is our father and the Lord who is our redeemer. And so unless we do have this picture, uh, you know, uh, uh, then we're not, gonna, we're not gonna reach what God has for us in our life. You gotta have intent. I've gotta have content and I've gotta bring the two together. I intended to do it. I had within me to do it. And when you bring those two together, then you and Jesus are walking together. We're walking together hand in hand with him. So tonight we could say this. John's got it in his, in his uh, lap right here. And I'm gonna hold it up for you. This is a Bible. And it's not just a book. It's not just a religious book. It's not just a book. It is a book that has the life of God in it. That book has the life of God in it. So when I ingest that word into my life, into my heart, into my soul, into my mind, when I ingest that in, what am I, what's the word bringing with it? He's bringing life. He's bringing life to me when I put it on the inside. With that on the, without that on the inside, you're your content will never be able to bring to pass your intent. And so not only do we have to have intention of praying, intention of speaking and confessing our faith, the intent of walking in faith, we've got to have this life of God that is at its best in it to, uh, to bring, bring us to the place that our intention is put into action, that the word of God is put into action, that we become a doer of the word of God until we stand and, and, uh, and, for, and uh, as our foundation, the word of God. I may intend, have, that may be my intention, but I gotta have the content. I gotta have in me what it takes to get the job done. 
So we don't want to be like a, some of the football players are, all of the grueling that we talked about a while ago. Some of them fell by the wayside because they, they you know, perhaps thought, well, I'm, I'm, I've done all this. I've heard all this. I'm tired of the coach yelling at me. I'm tired of all of the, those things. So what did they do? They either quit, retired, they fell off the wagon, as it were. That's what Satan wants us to do, folks. He wants us to fall off, quit, just desert everything that we've learned, what we know, and those kinds of things. What is the content of your heart? That's the message. We appreciate you watching. But you know sometimes that we have intent, intention to do something, but we just don't have it within us to do it. And so that's what we're talking about, our intentions, our intent versus our content. And so in order for our intention, you know, we intend to, to have a prayer life. We intend to have a faith life. We intend to do this. And then we have to check uh, the content that's within us. Do we have uh, the wherewithal to do it? Do we have the wherewithal to follow up? Do we have within us the drive, the desire to do what God has asked us to do or to do the, what God wills for us to do? So we can intend to have the prayer life. We can intend to live a faith life. But if we're not feeding on those things from the scripture, then the content in our heart is not where it should be to keep us in faith concerning those things. So thank you so much for viewing the program with us today. If you'd like to copy a CD or a DVD of today's message, we'll be glad to send it out to you. Post is paid, free of charge. You let us know. You can call us. You can text us. Uh, you can write us. Any way that's convenient for you to contact us, do that. We'll send you out a CD or a DVD. As I've said, no charge to you what Whatsoever. But we're so grateful you're there uh, watching and viewing the program. I do hope that it's a blessing to your life. And we just look forward to seeing you right here once again on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.